we have question number 10 from October, November 2014, paper four, variant two. And in this question here, it's about probability. Um, it's about some sort of game that some guy called Kenwin is playing a board game. Right, in this question, we're told that Kenwin plays a board game. And two cubes, dice, okay, each have faces numbered one to six as normal. Okay, normal dice. Um, in, the, in the game, a throw is rolling the two fair six dice and then adding the numbers on their top faces. So one throw is when you throw the two dice together and you add the numbers on their top faces. So for example, if you throw two dice and on the top of one dice, okay, you, you see they, they land like this, for example. On the top of one dice, you have a two, two dots. On the top of the other dice, for example, you have five dots. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, you got your other numbers in this, but the top topmost ones, you add them. Okay, um, you add the two numbers, you get seven. So that on that particular throw, the score you get is a seven. Okay, all right. Oh, I chose a different example. For example, the numbers are four and three, you move seven spaces. So I just chose two and five. I didn't read that. No problem. But you get the idea. So the total. So that's what a throw is. Okay. When you roll the two fair, two fair, the fair that means it's equally likely to land any one of those faces. Okay. And then you add the numbers together. That gives you the score for that particular throw. All right. And that is one. That's with that score you can then move that number of spaces along on the board. So if you get a total score of seven, you got to move seven spaces along the board. Okay. So now. Giving each as answers as a fraction in its simplest form, find the probability that he moves two spaces with his next throw. Okay, now, how many ways are there for him to get a total of two, okay, when you throw two fair dice, okay, in one throw? Well, there's only one way of getting a two, a total of two, is if you get it's one on each dice, if each dice shows a one on it, right? So... For the first dice, you're going to have 1 over 6. And for the second dice, you're also going to have 1 over 6. So the answer is going to be 1 over 36. Okay, so that's a probability that for the next throw, okay, he's going to be only moving two spaces. Because the only way he can get that is if there's a 1 on the one first dice and a 1 on the second dice. And there's only one way of getting a 1 on the first dice and one way of getting... So there's only a to one, one way of getting a total of 1. Okay, which is... Uh, sorry, a total of 2, which is going to be getting a one on each dice. So then it says 10 spaces with his next throw. Okay, now we're going to think of all the ways of getting a total of 10 when you have numbers from 1 to 6. Okay, if you want to, you could make a table instead of having to think about every single possibility. You could say, okay, the first dice, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Second dice, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six. You can see uh, with two throws, there's 36 possibilities. So you know it's going to be over 36. Maybe you have to simplify it all right here. And then you look at all the ways of getting a total of 10. Like one plus nothing will give you 10. Two plus none of these will give you 10 because it only goes up to six. And the, the first number that might will give you 10 would be four. So you've got four and six. And you've got five and five. Okay. You've got a, he's moving exactly 10 spaces. So you've got four and six. And you've got... Um, six and four so you've got four and six six and four and five and five okay there's no other ways of getting a total of 10 from these numbers here so there's three spaces out of 36 which gives you one out of 12 in its simplest form so there we have the answer to part a a part one and two of question number 10 now part b oh sorry part b is down here part b what is most what is the most likely number of spaces that Kenman will move with his next throw? Well, you see, but you've got to find the most likely total. So what we could do here is to make it a bit clearer. I'll just use some straight lines to make it. Oops, that's not a straight line, is it? Um, okay, those will be straight lines. So what we could do here is we could make some lines down here just to make it a bit neater. Straight. And straight, and straight, okay, just to make it look neat so you can see what's going on. Some people do this in their head, but it's just to show you exactly what we're supposed to 
how we're supposed to think. This is quite useful to make a little grid. Okay, it's so got to equal the space, but no problem. It's just a, a rough diagram. Now, we got to see what is the most likely, uh, what what is the most likely total when you add these numbers together. And you could, if you if you can't think of it straight away in your head, you can just simply just write down the totals for each of these, and it will soon become clear to you as you're doing it. Okay, what that total is going to be. Okay, so for example here, oops. For example, here you've got one and one, which is two. Um, then you've got two. That's three. That's four. That's five. That's six. That's seven. You'll see how it it will become clear in a minute. That's two and one, which is three. Then that's going to be four. Then five. Then six. Then seven. Then eight. You see. You'll see as you go across. You'll see what happens. So this is three and one is four. So everyone's going to be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. That's three and six is nine. Then you got four and one, five, and then you got six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Then you got six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Then you got seven, six plus one, six plus two, eight, six plus three, nine. And then you see it just continues with this pattern. Or six plus six is twelve. So you can see that the one that's going to give you the most likely is the one that continues all the way. So you've got, for example, here you've got one, two, three, four, five for the sixes. For the sevens, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different ways of getting a total of seven. You've got one and six and two and five and three and four. And four and three and five and two and six and one. So you've got all these different ways. There's six different ways of getting seven. You can see that's the total that appears the most. Okay, so the, what is the most likely number of spaces that he will move? It's seven spaces. Why? Because there are, you can say, write it in a, in a sensible way, there are more combinations, oops, combinations, from the right neatly with this pen here. There are more combinations which give something simple, simple which give seven as a total than, than any other number. After all the other totals, any other total we could say. Any other total. Okay, so the other totals will all, all be um, the number of times they occur is less. So seven is the most probable one. Okay, I'm going to answer part C on the next video. So bear with me. Thank you.